In this video we're going to install and configure our Citrix license server which will be used for our Citrix virtual apps and desktop sites. It will also be used by other Citrix products such as our Citrix PVS servers, it will be used by our app layering ELM appliance as well as our Citrix WEM uh, broker server. Um, we'll also be setting up and configuring uh, RDS licensing because we're going to be using server OS catalogs which will be using uh, the RDS session host role so those servers will need to use an RDS license server uh, which has been activated via the clearinghouse and has the correct uh, RDS cowls installed so we'll also be going through that installation and configuration as well so let's begin so these are the different licensing additions um, if you come to this URL here um, on the feature matrix for virtual apps and desktop these are all the uh, additions we've got virtual apps standard virtual apps advanced virtual apps premium these are all um, formerly zen app so the published apps uh, published desktops uh, on a server os running rds uh, session host role that's zen app so if we move on to virtual desktops, we've got a virtual desktop standard edition, which is just uh, formerly Zen Desktop VDI. But we've then also got virtual apps and desktops advanced and virtual and desktops premium. These combine uh, virtual apps uh, as well as virtual desktop. So Zen app and Zen desktop combined. Um, so you can provision um, pretty much all the Flexcast models uh, with those additions. Uh, you can publish hosted VDI, so random, uh, non persistent, and static persistent. Uh, you can also publish remote PC uh, Flexcast models, which is installing the VDI on a physical workstation and then accessing it via the HDX protocol. Um, you can also then do uh, the, the on-demand apps and the hosted shared desktops for your server OS catalogs. So it gives you a lot of flexibility um, if you use virtual apps and desktops rather than just using virtual apps. Um, these are all the different feature sets. So what I'd recommend is I'd recommend coming to this URL, uh, having a look through all these feature sets, and then depending on what features you require, you can then match that up to the required addition um, so for example, if you need to publish VDI, pulled and dedicated, you can see here you can't use Virtual Apps Standard or Virtual Apps Advanced. You would have to purchase Virtual Apps and Desktops Advanced or Virtual Apps and Desktops Premium to be able to do that. Uh, same with Remote PC Access. Again, you need Virtual Apps and Desktop Advanced and Virtual Apps and Desktop Premium. Uh, you do get some advanced uh, historic data with the premium versions. So for example, Citrix Director for the historic data and the trends. Um, when you use uh, Premium Edition, you can see you get a year's worth of historic data. So a lot of companies will choose either the Advanced Edition, Virtual Apps and Desktop Advanced or Premium um, due to the feature set. Um, you pretty much get all the features uh, with those two versions um, and with the premium edition you, you get some extras uh, such as the one year's worth of historical data for Citrix Director. So again it just depends on the company. I would speak to uh, um, your licensing uh, reseller and they'll be able to advise which license edition you need. Um, there is uh, different licensing models for Citrix um, with all these additions. So you've got concurrent license, which is pretty simple to understand. Once a user connects to a published app or desktop, it creates a session uh, from the device. The concurrent license is, is checked out to the device. Once the user logs off, then that license is then checked back in and available for the next user to come along and use it. Um, with per user per device licensing, it's slightly different. Uh, with per user per device, it's tied to either the user or the device for 90 days. Um, when you use per user licensing, uh, what that does is if you've got a user and they've got multiple devices such as an iPad, a laptop, a desktop, an iPhone um, and they connect from all of those devices it will only consume one per user license. Uh, per device licensing is the opposite so if you've got a single desktop PC within a depot or a warehouse and you've got multiple users all logging in uh, to that PC during the course of the day such as shift workers 
um, it will only consume one per device license so they're the different licensing uh, models uh, concurrent is is legacy it was pretty much always used with Zen app uh, per, per user per device it is quite new and uh, it's mainly used for, for Zen desktop um, you do get a an overdraft limit when you use per user per device licensing so you get a 10% overdraft um, so that will kick in once you've used all your per user per device licenses you get that 10% overdraft which is quite handy you can uh, manage the per user and per device licenses with a tool called UD admin um, so if you've got someone who leaves the company um, and they're consuming a per user license as I mentioned earlier that's tied to that user for 90 days and you might need to clear that down so you can use a tool called UD admin to view and also to delete per user per device licenses um, there is a grace period so if the delivery controller can't communicate with the Citrix license server you do get a 30 day grace period uh, for high availability of the Citrix license server what I typically do is I just have a standby Citrix license server so I'll put it on a work group I'll install the Citrix licensing server role um, have the lick file on standby on there and then if my primary Citrix license server was to fail I would just um, rename rename the Citrix license server join it to the domain uh, make sure the lick file was uh, installed and configured and then we'd be we'd be good to go so that's typically how I do HA with Citrix license server um, I just have a, a standby and as I say I'll just rename it rejoin it to domain if my primary Citrix license server was to fail um, the lick file will be on there uh, we'll install Citrix licensing on the standby server so it just takes a couple of minutes as I say you do get a 30 day grace period if the delivery controller can't communicate with your Citrix license server so it's not the end of the world if your Citrix license server's down um, so yeah that's it so we're now going to start in the installation of our Citrix license server um, one of the things we need to do first uh, once you speak to your uh, Citrix reseller um, and acquire a Citrix license you'll be given a license agreement number you have to activate that license agreement number and then you have to come in here and then allocate uh, that license to your Citrix license server by the host name of your Citrix license server so you can see here we've got basically a Citrix virtual apps and desktop evaluation license it's good for 90 days we've got 99 licenses so I'll show you how to to allocate this now so we come in here under all licensing tools activate and allocate licenses your activated license will show here so you just click on continue we'll then select it choose continue again and then this is where you enter your host ID so it is case sensitive so you have to be really careful with this so what I typically like to do is just open the command prompt or PowerShell uh, just type in host name and then copy and paste it in um, with the correct uh, case so you know it's going to be correct um, we've got 99 licenses we'll be checking out 99 click on continue click on confirm and now we'll be given the option to download our lick file here we go do you want to save or open uh, the lick file we'll click on save click on open folder and that's our license file now downloaded so we've successfully activated our license we've successfully allocated it to our Citrix license server so now we're just going to install our Citrix license server and then install that lick file so I'll show you how to do that so I've installed the um, ISO file and got that mounted so we need to just kick off the installation so I'll go to my computer double click my uh, ISO my CD-ROM drive click on start on virtual apps and desktops and then we're going to select the Citrix license server the version of Citrix license server we're going to be installing is going to be 11.16 it's very important that you always install the latest version of the Citrix license server especially if you're going to be using the new versions of uh, Citrix virtual apps and desktop we're going to be using uh, version 19.12 which is the latest LTSR and the license server supported by that version is 11.16 so we've got to make sure that that version is installed if you are upgrading from 7.6 or 7.15 
um, you've always got to make sure that you upgrade your Citrix license server first uh, to the latest version because if you don't do that you won't be able to upgrade so um, let's go through the installation now so accept the license terms we're going to click on next now these are the firewall rules so if your delivery controller and your Citrix license server are on a different subnet and there's a firewall in between them um, you need to make sure these firewall uh, ports are open so 7279 is the vendor daemon the 27000 is the Citrix license server the 8083 is what studio and director uh, use to communicate with the license server uh, to display licensing information and 8082 is the Citrix license admin console so we've got to make sure those uh, ports are open so we'll click on next click on install and now the installation will begin uh, the installation will take um, not very long you can see it's saying there's less than one minute remaining so we'll just wait for this to finish okay so the installation has now finished so what we need to do is we need to open the Citrix license at admin console so if we click on start and then if we go into Citrix which doesn't appear to be working my start menu is not working so we'll get to that another way so if we come into here hidden items program data Microsoft Windows start menu programs Citrix these two here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin these to the desktop there we go so we've got two tools we've got the license admin console and we've also got the Citrix licensing manager the Citrix license admin console is the old legacy tool whereas the Citrix licensing manager is new I prefer using the Citrix license admin console so we'll use that in this example we'll open uh, the URL within IE will accept the uh, certificate warning error and then you can see on the dashboard here you can see we've got no licenses installed so it's not actually displaying any licenses that we've got installed so what we'll do is we'll click on administration and then we'll log in uh, with the account that I've used to install the Citrix licensing server so that will be Carmo slash administrator click on submit okay the username and passwords incorrect okay must have did a typo there we go so that's worked this time so we're now logged in you can see the version of the Citrix license server here so we're using 11.16 uh, the Citrix license server ports 27,000 this is the host name of our Citrix license server this has got the IP address information so what we want to do um, is we want to come into here vendor daemon configuration and we need to import our license file when you import the license file it basically gets copied to this directory so C program files Citrix licensing my files the .lic file will be copied to this directory so we'll click on browse and then from the downloads directory we'll select our lick file We'll overwrite the license file. We don't have any other license files, so we don't really have to overwrite anything, but it doesn't harm anything to tick that. We'll click on import license. We'll click on OK. And now if we go back to that directory, you can see the LIC file has been imported into this directory. If we now go back to the dashboard, we still can't see all our Citrix licenses, even though we've imported our license file. What we need to do is we need to bring up the services.msc console and we need to restart our Citrix licensing service. Now if we do a refresh, so if we click on that and then go back to the dashboard. What I'll do is I'll log in again.
now we click on dashboard you can see all our licenses are now displayed so you can see we've got Citrix virtual apps and desktops premium uh, user device licenses we've got Citrix virtual apps and desktops premium concurrent licenses we've got 99 licenses available and because of the 90 day expiration they expire on the 16th of June um, what I'd recommend doing um, as well just to uh, to give your Citrix admins delegated permissions um, if you come into user configuration you can see built in slash administrators um, half the administrator role and also the person who installed the Citrix license server is also uh, an administrator by default what I like to do is I like to come in here um, choose domain administrator group and then we'll add our Citrix admins group so we'll choose Citrix slash uh, Citrix underscore admins click on save and now you can see our Carmo slash Citrix admins is a domain admin group and it has the administrator role so all the Citrix admins who are part of that group will be able to log into the Citrix license server now and manage this license server and they'll have the administrator role um, you can configure some um, alerts on the dashboard so if you're running out of concurrent licenses or your SA dates are expired or if you've got to a certain percentage of actable uh, licenses you can actually come in here and you can tick these so we're not actually going to change anything here within the alert configuration I'm just going to click on cancel and if we go back to the dashboard you can see now we've got multiple critical alerts come through these are for customer success services uh, it's saying it's expired and um, because we've got trial licenses we're not actually using customer success services so this doesn't matter in this instance um, but you can see the dashboard's pretty handy uh, especially as say if you run out of uh, concurrent licenses or if your SA dates expired or if your CSS is expired as well so it's always a good idea just to come in and just check this dashboard just to see if there's any errors um, you can also get alerts if the vendor demons down etc so it's, it's worth coming in here to check from time to time so I'm just going to log out of here uh, I'm going to quickly show you the new Citrix licensing manager which is the new tool um, there's a few features in here uh, which is quite new um, and you can't do in the old legacy uh, Citrix licensing admin console so I'll show you some of the new stuff within here so this view here the dashboard it, this is exactly the same uh, this is showing us all our licenses how many are in use um, and it's pretty much exactly the same uh, if we click on the settings cog uh, this is something that's new um, so if we click on the usage and statistics uh, setting uh, what we can do is we can connect this uh, Citrix license server to Citrix cloud um, and we can use something called Citrix Louis which is license usage insights so it uploads all our statistics for all our license usage to Citrix and then we can go in there and perform some analytics and look at some of the data um, so it's pretty good um, I recommend doing this um, you've got to use this if you're a CSP and using Splar licensing um, but it, it's a pretty good pretty good feature uh, to do that basically what you'll have is you'll have an activate button here um, and then you'll have to log into Citrix cloud I'll show you how to do that so we'll go to Citrix cloud um, once you log into Citrix cloud if you come under uh, the identity and access management and then if you click on API access and then under here product registrations you'll have this register button and what you'll do is you'll enter the ed digit code um, which you got from the Citrix licensing manager when you clicked on that register button that will then pair them and then your Citrix license server here will be uh, registered um, and then you can come under here licensing and then your license server will be displayed here and then you can run some usage reports it takes a little while for this to update so I've only just recently done this so it will take a little while for my license server to appear in here um, and I've not actually consumed any licenses yet neither so um, once we start using it give it a little bit of time our Citrix license server should now appear in here and we'll be able to get some uh, license usage reports so that's a pretty good pretty good feature um, if you 
go back to here under the Citrix license manager you can also run some historical usage reports from here so you can select your product edition so if we go down to virtual apps and desktop premium uh, we're using user device licenses set a start date end date click export and what will happen is you'll get a CSV file that you can uh, manipulate and have a look at some of the license usage uh, for historical uh, data so it's pretty good um, they've made quite a lot of improvements this console it's it's a lot better now you can also um, activate your license access code from here and allocate the license file to your Citrix license server so if you've got your license access code your LA number here you can just paste that in click on display license and then you can activate and allocate it to the host name of your Citrix license server so it's a pretty good tool um, as I say it's quite new um, I still kind of use the old legacy uh, Citrix license and admin console just just through experience and I've been using it for so many years um, but this is definitely better now and I think I'll probably eventually move over to this and start using this instead um, so yeah so we've now successfully installed our Citrix licensing server um, we've activated and allocated our license file we've installed our lick file onto our Citrix license server all our product licenses are shown as installed um, and we're now ready to move on to the next stage which is installing our RDS license server so we're now ready to install our RDS license server um, just before I do that I just want to direct you to this um, web page um, this has got some important information about the RDS license server and the version of the RDS cows and the operating system version of your RDS license server I suggest you give this a read um, because it's very important and this sometimes catches people out so for the RDS CAL version compatibility um, I'll read this out the RDS CAL for your users or devices must be compatible with the version of Windows Server that the user or device is connected to you can't use RDS CALs for earlier versions to access later versions of Windows Server so what that basically means is if you've got um, 2008 R2 RDS per user CALs you can't use them um, if you've got 2016 RDS session hosts um, it's not compatible it's the same if you've got um, RDS 2012 uh, per user cows per device cows you can see you can't use that with a 2016 RDS session host so you would at least have to install the RDS 2016 uh, cows either per user per device and then that would then be compatible with your 2016 uh, RDS session host um, they are backward compatible um, so if you use the latest version so for example here if we used um, the RDS 2019 per user per device cows you can see that they will work for a 2016 RDS session host so it's important to check that it's also important to check the version of your RDS license server from an operating system point of view for example if we've got a 2016 RDS license server you can see we can't install the RDS 2019 per user per device cows we would have to build a brand new uh, server 2019 RDS license server then we can install the RDS 2019 cows um, so it's important to check that um, as a general rule of thumb you want your operating system of your RDS license server to be the same uh, as your RDS uh, session host and then the version of the cows um, you have to have that the same or a newer version than the operating system of your RDS session host so if you've got 2016 RDS session host you would have a 2016 RDS license server and then the cows you would install on that would be 2016 either per user or per device cows so let's begin the installation so we need to open server manager so if we open server manager if we click on local server if we click on uh, manage and then we want to go into add roles and features click on next or we'll click on next again uh, server selection next again and then under the role selection we need to choose remote desktop services and click next under the feature selection we need to scroll all the way down and what we'll be doing is we'll install the RSAT tools for the RDS license server so if we expand remote server admin tools and then if we look for remote desktop services there we go remote desktop services tools 
Uh, what I like to install is the remote desktop licensing tools so we can have a look and manage our licenses. Click on next, click on next again and then this is where we get to choose the actual role services for remote desktop services. So we'll be setting this up as a remote desktop licensing server. So we're going to tick the remote desktop licensing option, click on next and then we'll click on install. And then we'll just wait for this to install. It should just be a, a couple of minutes. If it takes a little while, what I'll do is I'll close and um, reopen the video. I'll pause it. So I'm just going to check in server manager just to see if that's completed yet. It's still going. So we'll just wait for this to finish. It shouldn't be too long. Uh, once this is finished, what we'll do is we'll activate the server via the Microsoft Clearinghouse server and then we'll go through the installation of our RDS CALS. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, that looks like it's finished. Okay, yep, yeah, looks like it's done. So we'll click close on that. We'll do a refresh in Server Manager. Okay, so now we've got remote desktop services. So what we need to do here is we need to click on servers and then with our license server selected, we'll right click and we'll choose RD Licensing Manager. So this opens the RD Licensing Manager console. So you can see we've got a red X, our server's not activated, the di discovery scope's been set to domain. If we click on here, review configuration, we can actually change the scope um, so the discovery scope set to domain, so only RDS uh, session host servers within the same domain as this RDS license server can automatically discover this RDS license server. If you do have subdomains and different trees uh, within your active directory, within your forest, you can change the scope to forest wide. Um, you have to be an enterprise admin in AD to be able to change that. Um, but that is something that can be changed. Um, as we've just got a single domain uh, within a single forest, uh, we're just going to set the, the discovery scope to, to the domain wide. Um, there is a terminal services license server group in Active Directory. Um, if you are going to be using uh, RDS per user CALs um, and you need to run some CAL usage reports, this license server, once it's activated, needs to be added to that AD group. So we'll do that once we've activated it. Um, and then this is the service connection point in Active Directory. Uh, it's created that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on OK here. Um, we're going to right click on our RDS license server and we're going to activate it via the Microsoft Clearing House. We're just going to use the automatic connection method, which will use the Internet. So we'll click next on that. We're going to fill out some information here. So first name, uh, last name and then our company information. and then our country or region. So that will be United Kingdom. Click on next. Uh, this is optional. Email, uh, company address, city, state, postcode. You would typically fill this in for your company. Um, I'm not going to bother doing that as it's optional. We're going to click on next. And now it's going to go off across the internet, speak to the Microsoft Clearinghouse server, and then it's going to activate our RDS license server. So that's been successful. It's been successfully activated. I'm going to untick the start install wizard now uh, option because we'll do that manually. So we'll click finish on there. So you can now see server's been activated. Um, we still don't have any RDS cows uh, installed. So we need to start the installation of the RDS cows. So to do that, what you'll do is you'll right click on the server, choose install licenses. We'll click on next. It will locate the clearinghouse server. Now, typically in the most enterprises, you'll have an enterprise agreement number. Um, so that's the option we're going to select here. We're going to click on next. I'm just going to type in a fake enterprise agreement number because I don't actually have one. Um, but this is this you would get from your own company. So there would be an enterprise agreement number. Um, so we'll click next on that. Now this is very important. This is where you get to choose the version of the RDS CALS. So as I mentioned uh, earlier, if you've got 2016 RDS session hosts, you must have uh, 2016 
uh, cows. Um, you can't use, uh, for example, 2008 R2 or 2012 cows if you've got 2016 RDS session host servers. So you've got to make sure that we're going to be using Windows Server 2016 cows. The license type we're going to be using per user cows. So RDS per user cows, and we're just going to uh, request 50 of those. Uh, we'll click on next. And at this stage, it would go through and it would install those um, RDS cows. Um, as I don't have a valid enterprise agreement number, that's obviously going to fail. Um, but I thought I would just show you that um, just to see what it looked like. So if we click cancel, what would happen is if you expand your server out, those 2016 uh, per user cows would appear underneath here. Um, it would show you how many has been issued, how many is available and an ex expiration date if there was one. Um, but as you can see, because it didn't install, because we didn't have the enterprise agreement number, it doesn't actually show our RDS cows. So what I'm going to do now, once the server has been activated, we've installed the cows, we need to go into AD users and computers. So I'm just going to log on to my domain controller. So we've logged on to the domain controller. Um, this is the terminal services license server group that we need to add our RDS license server to. So I'm going to come into members. I'm going to click on add. I'm going to change the object type to computers. And then I'm going to do a search for my uh, RDS license server. So it's lon-ctx-lick01. There it is there. And the computer account has now been added to the terminal server license servers AD group. Click apply. Click on OK. And now if we go back to our um, RDS license server, and if we open the RD uh, licensing manager, if we do uh, refresh all, you can now see we've got a green checkbox. And then if we review the configuration, you can see now everything is listed as green. The discovery scope's been set to domain. Um, we've activated it via the clearing house. We've installed our 2016 per user cows, which obviously didn't work due to the fake enterprise agreement number, but you get the gist of it. We've added this server to the terminal server, license server group in Active Directory, so it can issue per user cows and run cow usage reports and the service connection point in Active Directory is all configured. So that's it done. That's from a configuration point. That's, that's all we need to do. Um, there's one other task that we need to do before we finish. We need to basically come onto our domain controller and we need to open the group policy management console and we need to create a GPO and link it to our server OS OU, which is going to contain all our server OS workloads with the RDS session host role installed. And we need to point them at the new RDS license server that we've just built and configured. So to do that, I'm just going to click on the server OS OU. I'm going to right click um, and create a GPO in this domain and link it here. I'm going to call it CC uh, for computer configuration and then I'm just going to call it RDS config. We'll click OK and now if we edit this GPO what we need to do is we need to expand uh, under computer configuration. We go into policies, admin templates, uh, Windows components. We're then looking for remote desktop services which is there. We'll go into remote desktop session host and then under licensing, we need to set this policy setting here. Use the specified remote desktop license servers. So we'll enable that. And then we'll type in the FQDN of our IDS license server. So it will be lon-ctx-lick01. We'll put the FQDN, so carmo.com. Um, if you've got multiple RDS license servers, so for high availability of RDS, um, what you typically do is you have multiple RDS license servers and then you can split the cows um, either 50-50 or 80-20 across those RDS license servers. Um, if you do have that, then you would just come in here and then separate them by a comma and then just click on OK. We're now going to set the RDS licensing mode because we've got 2016 per user cows installed. We need to set the RDS licensing mode to per user to match our cows. So per user, jobs done. Click OK. And that's it from a licensing point of view. They're the only two policy settings that we need to apply. 
what I like to apply to my uh, Server OS machines uh, running 2016 or 2019, um, which have the RDS session host role, is I like to set up some idle and disconnected timeouts. Um, so if a session's idle for a period of time, we want that session to be disconnected. And it's the same for our disconnected timeouts. We want to make sure that after a session is disconnected for a period of time, we want to make sure that that session is logged off. Um, that will save resources on our VDAs um, and it will con consume less CPU memory, IOPS, etc. So we need to make sure that these are in place. So to do that, we come down to session time limits. Um, we'll set a time limit for disconnected sessions. We'll set that to enabled. Uh, currently it's set to never, so it will never um, set a limit for disconnected sessions. What I like to do is uh, set this to around two hours. So once a disconnected session is disconnected for two hours, then that session will then be logged off and that session will be logged off and all the resources, the CPU, memory, IOPS, um, that, that session was consuming will no longer be used. The profile will be unloaded as well from the registry hive and deleted from uh, C users. So I recommend to do this. Um, so that's set to two hours. We'll set a limit for active but idle RDS sessions. So this is our idle timeout. So we'll set that to two hours as well. So if a session is idle for two hours, that session will then be disconnected. And then if the session is then disconnected for a further two hours, then the session will be logged off. So th these are good values, I find. Um, and then what we need to do um, is we need to set this policy setting here. Uh, end session when the time limits are reached, we need to enable that and then click apply. So that's all the policy settings that we need to do. We've set our idle uh, disconnected uh, timeout values and we've also made sure that the sessions uh, get ended once those timeouts are, are, are met. So that's it. So we've successfully uh, finished uh, the configuration of our RDS license server as well as our Citrix licensing server. In the next video we'll start the installation of our Citrix virtual apps and desktop 1912 site. Um, so we'll start with the installation of the delivery controller and then we'll start creating the site. So till the next video, thanks for watching. Cheers, bye.